Hello everybody, my name's Darren, welcome back to the Kilowatt Challenge with an update. But before all that, you're going to see some of this. I've just realised this is the bad hair show, look! You're going to see a little bit of this. Come on Darren, be professional! And you might even see one of these. Very, 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 very long time. But before all that... So here we are, it's spring 2021 and it's been a little while since I've given you guys an update. Lots has been happening, but first of all, I just want to say a very big thank you to everyone who sent me a message. Just checking in, checking I was okay, checking that, well, you know, things were still moving along nicely. Um, yes, of course, everything's just ticking along really nicely. It's been a very cold winter, it's been a very cold spring, a very wet spring as well. I've been keeping my lovely Patreon members up to date. They've had loads of videos, loads of chats, loads of one-to-one -one time. They, they know what's going on, but of course you guys, the YouTube family, the YouTube awesomeness people out there, it's about time I tell you what's been going on. Right, well, it's been cold here. Winter was freezing, long, cold, dark and freezing. And we used a lot of electricity in the house. Um, the January electricity bill was 570 US dollars for one month. The February electricity bill here was just over 500 US dollars for one month. And in March, we decided to change electricity company. And that's made a very big difference. Turns out we were actually paying quite a high rate for the energy usage. Um, the energy calculation, the cost of the, the electricity bills here in Sweden is actually quite complicated because you end up paying tax on top of your usage before you pay VAT. There's a surcharge, a taxable surcharge on the amount of energy that you use before they calculate how much sales tax we have to pay on the electricity. That's on top of the network fees, which I'm sure all of us have all over the world. Um, but the electricity bills here have been quite ridiculous, frankly. It's not a small house, but it's not a hotel, you know. I mean, 570 US dollars for one month's worth of electricity. That's not okay. That's not okay. So <laughs> that, was, that was quite a shock. Since we've changed the electricity company, I've also been around the house and I've changed all the light bulbs uh, in pretty much everything down to LED ones. Uh, Costs a lot of money. It's a big investment to do that, but I'm very confident that that will also bring down our electricity usage. Remember, we have no, if you like, modern heating system here. The house is heated using wood and using electric heaters, uh, and that's obviously a very big reason why the electricity bills are so high. There are some parts of the house which just can't, the log burners can't reach, you know? So there are electric heaters there. Now we're working towards putting in something more modern, a proper heating system, which is all part of the Kilowatt Challenge. And I'll document that whole story all the way through. But obviously winter time is difficult for us. Very difficult, because it's very expensive. I mean, think about it. Isn't it? Over a thousand dollars for two months worth of Heating and lighting, oh, it's just, that's not okay, that's not okay. Anyway, so the house is now green. All these bulbs, all the bulbs around me, which you can see are LED bulbs, except for the lights directly above my head. I did have the plan to film myself trying to replace that because I've got a new one over there. Maybe I will film that or maybe I'll just do it because because <laughs> doing these YouTube clips takes a lot of effort, but they're fun, don't worry about it. Anyway. So, about three months ago, approximately, I managed to get a hold of two mega cell chargers. Yes, finally. I waited a very long time, but I've been able to get myself two mega cell chargers. And I gotta tell you, what a difference that has made to how I test and process cells. I've just realized this is the bad hair show, look. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing a, a kind of a mini series on the mega cell chargers. Um, I really want to kind of explain the difference it's made to uh, how I process cells and how it's like a million times better than using just traditional Opus chargers or TP4056s or the Lakitas or all of the other chargers where you just put the batteries in and they just charge them and spit them out. Now, I've got so much more information. I've got so much more data around each and every individual cell. For example, this is, and I've saved this for you guys, this is cell number 3000. Now, I thought this was gonna be a heater because it's red and it's got a cyan, cayenne, whatever it's called. What is that, turquoise um, the collar on the inside? But it wasn't. 
and if I ever in the future think this is going to be a heater then, and I suspect it is I can go back and look at the data because every time it gets charged as a QR code I'm recording the data I've got history for every cell so when I bought the mega cell chargers the first thing I decided was with all the cells that I've processed so far I need to retest every single cell <laughs> And I didn't make that decision lightly. I remember thinking, is this overkill? Stuff on me top. Come on, Darren, be professional. <laughs> I remember thinking, is it too much to do that? <clears throat> but no, it's safety, isn't it? I mean, these opuses are absolutely super, super chargers, but there is a thermal cutout in them. They will turn off if they get too hot, as we know, but per cell, per charging bay, Nah, it's, I don't know, I don't know. But the Mega Cell Chargers, they really are super. So, behind me, you can see all of the cells that I've got labels on now, all of the little white stickers, have been reprocessed again through the Mega Cell Chargers. They've already been processed through the opuses, and most of them, <laughs> through the opuses, they all passed. That's why they're here. Not these guys. These are ready to be processed. But, all of this lot passed the Opus test, including these guys in here. But, but all of these have failed the testing when they've gone through the Mega Cell Charger. Look at all them. There's, there's a, well, I'm gonna say thousands. There's more than a thousand there. But anywho, <clears throat> so, more information on the Mega Cell Chargers coming up, probably the next video or probably the next video after that. I don't know, but soon. <laughs> I'm just busy charging, that's all I'm doing. Actually, on the subject of Mega Cell Chargers, this is my daily routine now to print out a stream of labels. <laughs> and these labels, every single cell has their own label. Let me see if I can get that into focus for you. Is that upside down? No. Let's see if I can get that into focus for you. There we go, look at that. So that's cell 3,579. It has a capacity of 2,579. Um, and the E value is the ESR uh, measurement, which I'll talk about in another video. The line below is the charging parameters. And then the bottom is the Megacell charger ID. The 110 is the last octet of the IP address and the hyphen one is the bay number. So, twice a day, my um, Dymo 450 printer chucks out um, a load of stickers like that, which I transfer onto the cells down here. And as you can see, I've been doing this for a very, 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 very long time. So what am I working on at the moment? Well, about four weeks ago, I bought loads and loads and loads of scooter cells, which are cylindrical like this. Each one contains 20 reasonably new EVE 18650 batteries. And despite the form factor being like this, or like this, the cells in here are actually really, really good. Um, they all look like <clears throat> these. And these seems to be popping up a lot in a lot of the e-bike batteries and e-scooter batteries that I'm processing, um, etc. And they are very, very good cells. I think because they're, they're newer. For me, now, I'm building a 40 kilowatt hour battery bank, battery array, depending on how you want to call it, depending on what, which perspective, which technical perspective you're looking at. Uh, and I'm now going to stop using laptop batteries because the laptop batteries, which I'm currently testing, all these random ones like this, different colours and stuff, I'm getting a lot of different results, um, a lot of bad results actually. Uh, and th th as I said earlier on, with the Mega Cell Charger, has now rejected a lot of the laptop cells which have passed the process um, using the Opus Chargers. The newer cells that come from the, the scooters and the bikes and stuff uh, seem to have a significantly higher pass rate. Now, let me tell you how I'm actually pre-qualifying the cells because that's changed as well. So on the advice of Wolf, thank you very much Wolf, you know who you are. Those of you who are active in the forums and in the community will know exactly who Wolf is because he's always providing us with super 
good quality technical information and very valuable advice. On the advice of Wolf, I bought myself an RC3563 internal resistance tester. And if you don't own one of these, then you need to stop what you're doing and buy one straight away. This has fundamentally changed how I process cells. Now, when I take the cells out of the battery packs, I use this to check the voltage and the internal resistance. It takes a fraction of a second longer to get the, uh, the reading. You know, when you've got your multimeter probes and you're going, yes, more than one volt, yes, more than one volt. Now it takes a little bit longer, but you also get the internal resistance. Now, why do we need that? Because look down here, these are my heaters. These are the heaters which I found when I was testing during the Opus charges, and I thought this was quite a lot. When I started using this, I started rejecting the cells which had a high internal resistance, and that's why these, <laughs> one of the reasons why these bins are so full, because a lot of those cells have got a high internal resistance. Now the Opus wouldn't tell me that, the internal resistance uh, measurement on an Opus is not really a credible measurement because to truly measure the internal resistance of a cell you need to use AC whereas the internal resistance uh, testing on uh, both the mega cell charger I'll talk about that in another video and in the Opus is, is DC whereas a proper internal resistance checker and these are only $40, 40 US dollars you need to get one will give you an reasonably accurate measurement, enough to be able to filter the cells which are just gonna produce heat. Those cells that will get up to 4.15 volts and then just start to fizz and heat and burn and they never fully truly charge. Very hard to find those in an Opus charger without using a thermal camera or without using your hands. But with an internal resistance meter, you will end up finding your heaters before they even become heaters. I highly recommend those. So finally, just a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you very much for being there, guys. I hope you're enjoying the content which I've been giving you over this quiet period on YouTube. I hope you've uh, enjoyed the interaction that I've been giving you. If you feel like supporting the project on Patreon, link below. And whilst you're down there, why don't you click like, subscribe, and all that other social media stuff that everybody keeps asking us to do. So I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, keep your hands clean, <laughs> keep your nose clean. And I'll see you very soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. 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 Did I click record? Yes, I did. <laughs>